everybody, this is Noelle from Petiti Garden Centers and we're here at our Oakwood Village Petites. And it's February and even though we're covered by snow, we've had so much snow this winter, there is a lot to see inside. And especially, we love being in house plants. It's our tropical paradise here. Um, but we also wanna give you a reminder that take care of your feathered friends. So make sure that you're providing them with food, Keep those feeders full and clean, cleaned in between as they get emptied out. So make sure those feeders are full. Make sure that you are giving them some fresh water. So if you can keep a saucer, bird bath, you know, open, use a bird bath heater or what have you, or keep on filling with water, that's always really, really good for them. And any type of shelter you can provide them too. So that always really, really, really helps. Obviously, evergreens are a natural source of shelter, so that's always really good to have the evergreens around the yard uh, for the birds. So let's look at some of these tropical plants. And of course, we are in February, so we are gonna show you um, quite a few plants that would be great for Valentine's Day, of course, but really good at any time of year here. So I wanted to show you really quickly, um, you'll see the Calancho or Calanchoe. I've heard people say it both ways. Uh, the Kalanchoe is a single flower. Sometimes we have the double flowered varieties, but the Kalanchoe is a semi-succulent, really good flowering plant that flowers in the winter. It's that natural flowering time for them. So this is a great time for them that all look gorgeous, all different colors, rainbows of colors, pinks and reds, of course, for Valentine's, but of course you'll see white, yellow, orange, uh, fuchsia color. So there are many, many, many to choose from. Great plant if you don't like to water very often because they can tolerate drying down. And then of course, thoroughly watering when they are dry and that soil kind of pulls away from the pot and then go ahead and just water them again and they do great for us. So you'll see uh, Kalanchoe. You'll also see these beautiful cyclamen. So this is really a great time of year for cyclamen. Uh, cyclamen are a forced bulb. So there's a little bulb down here at the base. They love cooler temperatures. So if you have sort of a, a bright window, okay, so like a northern exposure, but it's really cool or even drafty, the cooler temperatures work really, really well for the cyclamen. I wanted to show you one more thing. Great time of year to try African violets. These are cute little guys that they have bottom watering vessels. So all you have to do is fill that bottom vessel and then go ahead and kind of snap the top right back in and they're ready to go. And that's perfect for African violets, of course. If you overhead water African violets, if you're using cold water, it gets on that fuzzy foliage and of course can mark the, the foliage. So it's really great to bottom water, but it's really good to bottom water lots of different plants. So again, um, try this, this might be a really good idea. Okay, gardenias here and some other things. The gardenias aren't blooming right now, but of course, always a really nice plant to try. Very, um, I would say for a intermediate to experienced indoor houseplant grower, just because they can be a little bit touchy. Gardenias being tropical for us or exotic for us in Ohio, but they still like to have really good sun coming through a window, but cooler temperatures inside the house. So you might have to play with those a little bit, try them out, okay? Um, let's keep on moving here. I love these little globes here. And look at that. So this is a beautiful pink Aglaonema or Chinese evergreen. Um, and this is, they're just in what we call a sprout bowl. And it's just a glass container, nice white roots, which is always what you wanna see when you are um, doing some cuttings or some forcings in a glass container, but beautiful foliage here. And they're doing fine. This is one of those types of gifts, if you will, that um, you know you you 
think your friend doesn't doesn't have the greenest thumb in the world. These are very, very easy to care for. If the water is starting to get maybe a little bit colored, they can go ahead and just pop the cork off, pour the water out, refill, and they're ready to go. Place the cork back on, the plant just you know nested back in there, ready to go. And they're very, very easy to grow. Let me grab a primrose. And the primrose, again, just like the cyclamen, really do appreciate cooler temperatures indoors, kind of that drafty cooler window, if you will, bright um, indirect light. So again, that northern exposure, or maybe just a few feet away from an eastern or western or southern exposure, um, or a diffuse curtain on those uh, windows. But again, keeping them cool and then letting them kind of dry slightly, you'll start to see them wilt ever so slightly, just kind of give. And then that's your signal to go ahead and, and rewater, okay? So go ahead and water the soil thoroughly twice, let that water drain away, and then go ahead and place it back in their spot where you're enjoying them. And of course, primrose are very fragrant. I will have to say the yellows, if you can get the yellows, they are really the most fragrant. We also have some paper whites right now look at that so talk about perfumey so some double paper whites that have been forced right now for the valentine's holiday so that's always really nice and some amaryllis they're just starting to come up just having some nice buds here um, some new leaf growth as well and these guys are dry kind of on the top of the soil and that's actually how you want it um, so make sure that you're not over watering at this time of year especially any forced bulbs um, cyclamen anything like that because again if you're over watering and that soil is staying moist it's actually rotting or deteriorating the bulb that's in that soil. So again, keeping things on the drier side is always a really good idea. After you thoroughly water, go ahead and put them back and let them naturally dry, okay? To the point where you're really looking at maybe one to two inches of the top layer of soil being dry, okay? So keep that in mind, especially over winter inside. Um, as we keep going here, beautiful orchids, obviously Phalaenopsis orchids are a really great choice, um, especially for beginning um, orchid lovers, let's say. Um, they are really great at this time of year because they can tolerate lower light levels that we have in winter, but this is their natural bloom time again and their bloom cycle. Um, so you'll see all different colors and the purples and whites and so forth. Um, but again, this is just a wonderful plant, easy plant to take care of, okay? Um, a lot of folks ask us if you can water with ice cubes. You can, it's not something that we prefer uh, that you do. If you're gonna water with ice cubes, go ahead and just pop a couple ice cubes in a cup and then go ahead and let them melt down and come to kind of room temperature, if you will, and then apply it to the soil substrate. When you're putting ice cubes directly on uh, the air roots and let's say they hit the leaves, they can damage those areas. So that's why we'd prefer if you want to just use the ice cube method, just let them melt and then go ahead and apply them. So um, that's something to keep in mind, okay? As we go, lots of different succulents at this time of year. Um, my goodness, <laughs> there are so many different aloe and echeveria and um, gosh, hawarthia. There's, there's so much to love at this time of year. Some of the succulents are blooming too, so you might see some real thin stems coming up with some flowering. Um, the echeveria, some of the echeverias are just on the end of their bloom cycle as well. Um, but again, with your succulents, just make sure that you aren't over watering. They really do not need a lot of care at this time of year. Keep them on the cooler side of temperatures, if you will, and keep them on the drier side. We're really talking about maybe one thorough watering a month. Um, even with smaller pots, it might be one thorough watering maybe once every three to four weeks again. So just keep in mind, you don't want to overwater at this time of year. Look at all these guys. So there's really a lot of color to be had in your foliage house plants. Um, everything from this tricolor stromanthi, um, the strawberry begonias are really coming back. They look gorgeous, that fuzzy foliage. 
and you know those trailing uh, vining branches kind of as they are coming down but really really easy plants um, to grow and enjoy and and my gosh folks I mean ooh, this is one of my favorites right now so this is silver satin pothos as well beautiful variegated foliage has a nice kind of shimmery shine on the foliage but again pothos easy to grow um, this one's a little bit wet i can just feel how heavy the pot is right now but again these plants you really want to let them slightly dry out before you are reapplying water and you'll notice sometimes they start to get a little bit yellow in winter especially at the base of the foliage um, and 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 that yellowing does indicate overwatering. Okay, so just make sure that you're taking care of your house plants, not overdoing it. Um, but I'll tell you, the the silver pothos is really, really nice. Um, just a lot of color. I don't even know where to start, Taylor. It's like, you know, color variety everywhere. Lots of foliage. So in this area, we have low to medium indirect light plants. So look for the signs. Um, right here on the front of the table, uh, just below, it kind of tells you about your medium or to low um, house plant. So you're looking at bright, or excuse me, medium to low indirect lighting. So again, kind of away from those bright sunny windows, um, moving the plants back into kind of the middle of the room, or maybe even into a darker area where you just have enough light to read by. So again, lots of different choices for that type of aspect. More low light house plants here behind me, everything from beautiful calatheas um, all the way down to some really pretty Pretty philodendrons through here and also Chinese evergreens so pink and Diefenbachia too we always kind of forget to mention the Diefenbachia but those are always really great as well easy house plants to grow and then kind of in the back here we have some floor plant material but again if you're looking at the signage you know these are going to be for bright light so those you know open areas lots of windows um, again just just uh, plants that will do much better in those brighter areas. And of course we have the, the fiddle leaf fig, which really does like bright indirect light, no direct sunlight necessarily, but just a really bright room. So something to keep in mind when you're coming by. <gasps> Taylor, oh my gosh. I'm gonna show you guys this. So there's some new Diefenbachias that have come out and this is camouflage. Look at the foliage on this. It's almost white right down the center. Just has a little bit of a slight limey green to it and nice pretty black or kind of dark green polka dots there. And then this is Panther. Look at that one. Look at the coloration on that. And the spots are really, really light green. Beautiful. Folks, Stephen Bakke are really easy. They have a terrible common name. It's called Dumb Cane. Um, but I'm gonna tell you, they're great for that medium low light aspect. They do so well, drier side of watering. Again, when you see that slight wilt with them or when their pots are really light, go ahead and thoroughly rewater again. But they're so easy to grow and they're a great air purifier too. So think about Diefenbachia. Plenty of hanging plant options. Again, we talk about when you're decorating with house plants, if you can go from floor plant to to maybe small plants on a, you know, a desk or a side table or what have you, sort of that medium height. And then you can also hang some plant material up above at different tiers and so forth um, with your hanging plants. You're gonna see a lot of different um, trailing varieties, of course, in the hanging baskets. Most of them here are gonna be in that pothos family. So I was telling you about pothos, lots of different varieties. Um, this is Cebu Blue, beautiful kind of silvery leaf, a little bit more narrow leaf, uh, more like arrowhead-like on this one, but gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous coloring. And then you have Enjoy. Look at the variegation on that. Beautiful white variegation. Um, 
that there's kind of a little thing that we say with enjoy. You're always going to enjoy it um, because you can keep on giving it to people over and over and over again. This is a, just a great grower. And then look at that neon, that beautiful neon, kind of chartreuse yellow, um, but beautiful uh, pothos varieties. They all work so well. Again, with pothos, my key is um, you have them hanging, and obviously if you have them hanging up, they're getting a little bit drier or warmer up at the top of the room. So you, you kind of wonder, how often do I need to water these? Again, these guys could almost go completely flat because they're wilted. You go ahead again and thoroughly water them. They will perk back up very, very nicely for you. I don't necessarily want you to have them go flat, but if you see that happen, it's okay. You can water them and they'll be fine. Another plant that we absolutely love is this beautiful ZZ plant, but this is the dark leaf variety. This is called Raven. And Raven, uh, again, is just as easy as the original ZZ plant, the original species, just a darker foliage. But um, these guys are so nice because they're low light. Um, you can really put them in a, a fairly dark area with a, a really almost no natural light in there and they will do fine and then keep them very very, very dry. They're very, very succulent stems, allow them to be almost dry. And you can, the top of the soil is very, very dry. I probably have to get my finger down there a couple inches before I actually feel some moisture. And that's okay. ZZ can handle it. They do not want to be wet at all. So keep them very, very on the very dry side. They'll do fine. And then there's actually a little miniature here. This is, um, a dwarf ZZ. This one's called Zenzi. So you can tell a little bit more compact. Leaves are closer together on the stems. Leaves are smaller. They have a little bit of a wave or a pucker in them, but that's exactly what they're supposed to look like. So this is like your dwarf uh, ZZ plant. But again, just as easy to take care of. Um, you know, again, drier conditions, soil conditions, and low to medium in direct light, they do great. Also remember, February is when you really start want to thinking about your seed starting. So I just wanted to show you all um, something that you could do every day all throughout the year is start sprouting in the kitchen. Um, some folks use a very simple apparatus of just a ball jar, some uh, seed sprout seeds, if you will, and then just a mesh top rinse them off a couple times a day and then hang them upside down so they're draining. That works really, really well, but there's all different types of um, apparatus, if you will, that you can use to really sprout your seeds. So this is just a package of alfalfa, but again, something you can do and seed start basically every day, very, very quick rewards. Usually alfalfa sprouts within probably three to five to seven days, depending on how warm the house is. Um, so again, something that you could kind of get almost instant gratification from these seeds. And again, just looking for other plants that you wanna grow this season. Um, I wouldn't say start your seeds right now at the beginning of February, but again, looking for those supplies, looking for the varieties that you wanna try, um, and also looking at the packages, making sure that you're starting them at the right time Time, not too early. Um, I'll say that normally we'll start maybe the peppers kind of mid to late February, tomatoes again late February, early March, but it's never too early to start looking for some new varieties that you want to grow. So have a great uh, February. Come and visit us. Check out some of the house plants, purify some air inside, and enjoy.